In this video, we're going to do a quick tour of Honey Badger's exception monitoring system. If you've never used Honey Badger before and want a quick lay of the land, this one's for you. It all starts when you get an alert. It could be an email alert. It could be over a service like PagerDuty. But in this case, we're using our Slack integration. It looks like I've got a template error. I'll click on that to see the details. And that takes me to the Honey Badger error page. Most of the time, this single page will contain all the information I need to solve the problem. I see from the heading that this is an action view template error in the show action of the products controller. The message tells me I'm calling an undefined method name on nil. Furthermore, I see that this error is currently unresolved. When an error is marked unresolved, that means that we won't send you any additional notifications about it. If you mark it resolved and it reoccurs, then we'll send you another notification. I can resolve the error manually, or I can set the project to resolve all errors whenever I deploy. That will prevent older, unresolved errors from slipping through the cracks. I can see that this particular error has happened a number of times. Because each occurrence shares the same backtrace, class, etc., we've grouped them together and you can navigate through them on this single page. You can view older occurrences of the error by using the links, or you can use keyboard shortcuts using the left and right keyboard arrows. If you need to jump to a specific occurrence that happened at a particular time, just click on one of the bars in the timeline. Now let's go back to the occurrence we were originally looking at, the most recent one. Whenever I get an error notification for any of my apps, the first thing I want to look at is the backtrace. We actually offer a couple of different backtraces. The first, which we call the application trace, just contains your code. It doesn't contain any third party Ruby gems or other libraries. The full trace, contains everything. And farther down, there's a section called nested backtraces. In Ruby, these are called causes. They happen when you rescue one exception and raise a second exception. You'll see them a lot in view errors, where the framework has rescued the error in the template and re-raises its own error. Our backtraces have a couple of cool features that I really want to point out. Each line of the backtrace links out to the appropriate file on GitHub or Bitbucket. If your backtrace flows through any Ruby gem code, we also link out to the repositories for those if they're open source and hosted on GitHub. You can also click on a link to open the file in your local editor. We support most of the popular editors like Vim, Sublime, and TextMate. If you've looked at your backtrace and it's still not obvious what the problem is, chances are you want to take a look at the data that was flowing through your app at the time of the exception. The first section we see is context. Context is user-definable metadata that's sent along with your error. You set it by calling a special method in your app. In Ruby, it's honeybadger.context. Check out the docs for more information on that. We also pull in request parameters, request headers, and if this particular occurrence had any session data associated with it, you'd see that here, but it doesn't. We do our best to not report any sensitive information like environment variables that may contain API keys. And you can configure our client libraries to scrub any sensitive data from your error reports. If you scroll all the way down, you see the error history. In this case, we've resolved this particular error by deploying to production several times. So it looks like it's not really getting fixed. We might want to look into that. All right, so now we've looked at the backtrace. We know where this exception occurred. We've looked at the data. If we still don't have a good idea what the problem is, maybe it's time to go back and look for other related errors. It's a great use for Honey Badger's search feature. You can actually search against the values in these data hashes. I notice that I have a value in my request parameters, ID equals 636. If I want to go search for other errors with that same ID, I can do that. I'll just go back to the error list for this project, and I'll type in params.id colon 636. To learn more about search, check out docs.honeybadger.io. There's a whole documentation section on it and we have a very useful video. But for now, let's head back to that error page. I want to show you one more thing before I let you go. Right below the error summary, you'll notice a bunch of links. This is where you can delete the error. You can ignore any more errors like this. You can assign the error to a person. And if you happen to have integrations set up with project trackers, you can view or create issues in them. For example, I have this project set up with Bitbucket, so I can view the Bitbucket issue that I've created for this particular error. You can set it up so that new exceptions automatically create issues in your issue tracker, or you can do it manually. Right below the action links is a comment field. 
You can add comments in GitHub Flavored Markdown that will be broadcast to your team, and they'll be attached to all future occurrences of the same error. Well, that's it. You should have a pretty good idea of how the Honey Badger's error tracking system works now. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at honeybadger.io. We're always happy to talk. And we also have a pretty good documentation site at docs.honeybadger.io. Thanks for watching.